In this federal election campaign, climate change has emerged as a major issue and the party's plans to tackle it could be a decider for many voters. So how do those plans stack up against each other and against the Paris Agreement, which Canada has signed on to? Peter Armstrong is here with the breakdown. So, Peter, uh, curbing Canada's carbon emissions, that's not so easy. It's not. So let, let's just set the stage here. Right now, Canada emits about 700 megatons of greenhouse gas emissions here. That's more per capita than any other country in the G20. Just for example, one megaton, that's about the same as the yearly emissions from like 216,000 cars. So climate experts say reaching those Paris targets, that's going to require some pretty dramatic action. Um, we need radical change. We need deep decarbonization. We need it to start now. We need a full frontal uh, attack on the climate crisis. So we asked the research from Navius to take a look and see how just how close each party proposal would get to that target, what the cost to the economy would be. Now, the main liberal policy is its carbon tax. They also have a plan to help companies get to zero emissions. But even factor all that in, it falls well short of that Paris targets. Now, the liberals say they'll also plant like two billion trees, but Navius says they couldn't even sort of estimate the impact that would have on emissions. Okay, but the Conservative plan is substantially different in that uh, it, they're talking about getting rid of the carbon tax, at least for consumers. For consumers. Now, the Conservatives will force companies that emit more than a certain amount to reinvest money in what they call emissions-reducing technology. Okay, sounds like a carbon tax. Well, they're certainly not going to call it that. But more importantly, Adrian, we don't have some of the key details here. I mean, what sort of a price they'll put on carbon, how much they'll force those companies to reinvest. But if they maintain the existing price, here's where the Conservatives land. And what about the NDP? How are they faring? Well, they do better than the Liberals and the Conservatives, but they fall short too. So let's look at all three of the main parties here. Not one of them meets the Paris targets, but... Let's look at the Greens, because they literally called their plan Mission Possible. They'd ban fracking. They'd retrofit every building in Canada. They'd make every new car electric by 2030. The Green Party would actually beat those Paris targets. Okay, those are the plans, but uh, where's the price tag <laughs> for well, this? Well, for that, let, let's look at economic growth for the last few years. Navius is trying to project out what growth would look like between now and 2030 under each party. You can see the big three all come fairly close to one another. Then the Greens come in. It's more than a half a point down to 1.25%. And this doesn't factor in damage that would be caused to the economy if Canada does nothing. If you look overall, summing up everything, it's not a loss to the economy. On the contrary, you're tackling an issue, and at the same time, you're making sure that, okay, the economy is growing in a, in a, in a similar way. But the key is just to bear in mind that it is possible for the economy to, to grow even further. The main thing that I think experts are trying to tell us is that you can reduce emissions and grow the economy if you want to. All right, Peter, thanks very much.